Hello, viewers. My name is Frank, and in this part of the video, we are going to look at the SICB template for 2024 through 2025 applications. And before we go by, I mean, filling the SICB template, we need to look at some of the crucial instructions that we need to follow. The first instruction is, the CV should only contain relevant information about your experience and background in accordance with the categories and headings in the template. So the experience, now remember that you have already stated some experience in the work experience and leadership experience. It's advisable for you to bring those experiences in the CV. Now, the second one is that you may not alter the formatting of the template nor create new categories or headings in the template. Alterations will render your application ineligible. However, you may delete headings or entries you do not need. Okay, look at this one. However, you may delete headings or entries you do not need. So let me show you how can delete some headings or entries you do not you do not need. Let's go down here. An example is under the work experience, as you can see. If your work experience is only one work experience, now remember that we have three categories under work experience. We have we have this one, the first one, and then we have the second one has been highlighted here and then we have third one so if you are presenting one work experience it means that you are going to fill this one and for that matter the second and the third one are not needed and so you can highlight it and uh, delete it okay because you don't need this one so you can highlight it and delete it, as you can see here. It's been deleted, so you can delete all the bullets. Now you have only one uh, category or heading for the work experience because the work experience is only one. If your work experience is two or three, then you don't need to delete the category and the work experience. So that is the instruction uh, number two here. Now let's go to instruction number three. Uh, fill out separate entries for each experience, degree or network engagement or scholarship as needed under each of these categories. Delete any headings or entries you deem unnecessary. As I deleted, according to your situation, you can add entries, except under the category work experience, as long as the CV does not exceed three pages, please. Your CV may not exceed three pages. It is very important. Make sure that it does not exceed the three pages, maximum. Supposed to be within three pages, okay? Should not exceed three pages. Now, under the work experience, okay, you see that there were three subcategories or there were three uh, categories under work experience. Now remember that under the work experience, you cannot add entries. I mean, that means that the maximum work experience you can submit based on the CV here, the maximum work experience can only be free because you cannot add entries. You, you only have three entries, meaning that you cannot add any other entry. You can only submit maximum of three work experience. Now, apart from the work experience, if you come to education and training, education and training, according to the instruction, you can add entry. Entry means that, for example, I mean, you can see that you have one entry. Let's say that this entry is for university 
this entry, let's say it's for senior high school. This entry, let's say it's for jun uh, junior high school. And let's say you want to add primary or there are some of you, you attended like two universities. Maybe you have double degree. So maybe this can be the, your first university. This can be your second university. This can be your senior high school. And maybe you would want to add another entry. That means you need to copy this. Then you can come down here and then paste it here. Okay. You can copy and then paste it. But make sure that when you paste, you don't distort this, as you can see. So now here I have four entries instead of three entries. So it depends on your situation. But it is important that your university comes. That's the most important thing. Your Maybe your senior high school comes and maybe your junior high school follows, depending on your situation. Okay. Good. So you can only add entries. You don't need, I mean, you don't have to add entry under work experience. But apart from work experience uh, category, the other categories like education and training, like the network or civil society organization, like uh, the previous scholarship or awards that you have held, in these areas, you can add entries. It depends on your situation. But you don't need to you know, burden the CV with so many information. You have to put information that are necessary. Okay, that is the instruction there. Now let's go to the other instruction. All entries under each category must be in reverse chronological order, starting from the most recent. Okay, so you, I mean, if you look at this one, in the work experience, for instance, let's say you work in company A and you, you went to another company B, make sure that the current company where you worked is being filled here, okay? And your old company goes here. So reverse chronological order means most recent first, and it's very important, okay? I will show you how to fill the form, but we need to look at the instructions. Another instruction here is that the CV may not exceed three pages. Any pages exceeding the maximum will not be considered. Okay, now when you are done, you convert your CV to PDF, then you upload it. You don't need to include the instruction page. This is the instruction page. You don't need to include this one when you are uploading it on the SI application portal. You only have to upload the, the second, the third and the fourth page. So you can only have three pages. You don't need to exceed the maximum. Okay, so let's look at how to fill the form. Now, here you have been asked to replace with your first name, then surname as shown on the passport. Okay, so what I would what I do or what you, you can do is that you can put the Keza in front of the replace, okay, then you, you write your name, okay? So let's say, Esther, Esther Martins, okay? Esther is the first name, Martins is the second name. Then you can press the delete key, then it delete these ones, because this is what we need. The second one is, uh, replace with your current residential address your current residential address and your current residential address must begin with the house number. Okay, it must begin with the house number, the street name, the city, the postcode and country. So for example, uh, I'll put the Keza here in front of the replace, then house number, let's say plot block X, block Y, because that's the house number. Then the street name, the street name is Enugu, 
Enugu. Okay, then followed by the city. The city is, let's say, Lagos. The postcode, okay, postcode 00234, then country, Nigeria. Okay, that's all. Then you delete, you delete these. Okay, then here you replace with your telephone number, including country code. So if the country code is 00234, or, or you can make it plus, plus two, three, four, it's accepted, depending on your country code. If this is for, this is Nigeria, Ghana, plus two, three, three, followed by your, the telephone number. Okay, then you delete these ones. Then you enter your mobile number. Okay, including country code. If you don't have a telephone, you know, you can either enter both your mobile number here, and maybe if you have another same number can be here, or I mean, a, a second number of yours. Then you you write your email here. Okay. Then you delete. Okay, so this is the personal information. Then your sex, your sex, click on it. Then the menu will open. So if you are male or female, you choose here male or female. Then date of birth, date of birth begin with the year. The year is for the get. Okay, so 1984, the month should be two digits. The month should be two digits. Zero three, then the day should be two digits, 24th. Then your citizenship, maybe you are a Ghanaian or a Nigerian, Nigerian, so citizenship is Nigerian or Ghanaian, Egyptian, whatever the citizenship is. Okay. Now let's go to the work experience. Here it says that fill out separate entries for each experience or employer. Start from the most recent and the maximum three entries okay so under the work experience you can only have three entries please under the work experience make sure you don't add any other entry to make it four or five that is incorrect so work experience let's say replace with date okay if you look at the date of birth and how the formatting of uh date, I mean, you can go by this format, by using the date of birth format here. So we place with the date, okay? So from, so you work from, let's say 2006, which is up, uh, March 2006, and the day was 24, okay? You work from this date, and for example, if you are still in that position, you can write to today. Okay, that means you are still there. Then you clean this one. Okay, so now you work from 24th March 2006 to today. Today means you are still there. Or maybe if it was an old job, 2012, 06. 29, okay, depending on your situation. So let's assume that this is today. Replace with the occupation or position you held. Okay, for example, if you were, uh, if you were a science teacher, maybe this was your work experience and uh, maybe you had a leadership role Maybe you were discipline, 
disciplinary, disciplinary committee, committee chairman or chairperson. Okay, you had these two positions. One is work experience and the other one is uh, leadership experience. Okay, then you can replace with your employer the name, the, the, the organization name. Let's say XYZ company or let's say XYZ school. Okay, in the locality. Okay, the name and the locality. Where is the school? The school is in Enugu State. Okay, and the good state. Then if the school has a website, the school has a website, you can put it there. That is if the school has a website, if the school doesn't have a website, then you can delete that session. So replace with your main tax and responsibilities. Please, these two bullet points, Maintain these two bullet points. It is not advisable to create additional bullet points. If you create additional bullet points, that means you have created some entries, which is not accepted on under the work experience. Maintain these two bullet points. The first bullet point is replace with your main tax and responsibilities. Okay, your main tax and re responsibilities. So one sentence is enough. We don't need to burden the CV with so many things. So your main tax, so it is important you can bring the PESA here, your main tax, maybe your main tax was, uh, if it is your current job, that means I teach science courses using lectures, technology, and uh, hands on learning experience. This was this is your main tax and responsibilities. Now the second bullet point is about your leadership position. And here it says that if you were in a leadership position, please describe it briefly and indicate how many employees were under your supervision if applicable. So here you can see that under the position here, the person has leadership position, which is disciplinary committee chairperson. Okay, so um, um, describe what your position was about and how many employees were under your supervision, okay? So here, you, you, I mean, under, I conduct, I conduct all disciplinary hearing and facilitate amicable solution to complainants. Okay, so how many uh, employees were under your supervision? Maybe you were chairperson, so the committee has let's say uh, four members, five members. So that means four employees were, were under my supervision. And since it's a school, that means you supervise any student that comes. That means. Uh, I mean, you supervise the students as well. So, but you can only maintain the employees. So, add the industry or sector. So, here you'll be asked industry or sector. I mean, it's a school. Okay, it's a school. So, the industry, the industry is education. Okay. All right. Now, let me show you this. Um, um, some of the industries, okay? Some of the, the industry can be agriculture, it can be um, healthcare, 
technology, finance, manufacturing, depending on your case. For example, if you are working in a financial institution, then the industry you write finance. If it, it can be manufacturing, it can be energy, it can be retail, it can be entertainment and media, it can be agriculture, it can be telecommunications, transportation, real estate, construction, tourism, hospitality, non-profit and social service. So these are the industries, okay? But in this case, maybe education, brief description of the organization. So here you describe the organization and how many employees, how many employees are within the organization. So you describe brief description of the organization and then make sure that you, you indicate how many employees, if the employees are 70, 80, you indicate it. Then here, the SDG, most closely related to the work you did at this position. Now look at this one. The applicant was a teacher and it is clear that the institution is a school. So basically, if you click here, okay, if you click here, I mean, the SDG that is related to this is quality education. Then you click on quality education. Okay, so you do the same for all the work experience. If you have a second work experience, if you have a third work experience, you do that for all of them. Then you move to the education and training. Okay, education and training. Um, replace with date from to make sure that you, you write your education and training in reverse chronological order, most recent first. So, so definitely your university is going to be the first one. So uh, so maybe you started your, your university in 2007 and you completed in 2012. Okay. You place with a qualification, bachelor of Bachelor of Science in Agriculture. If this is your qualification, then you will place here with education and training organization name and the locality. So here the university name, University of Ghana. Where is it located? Legon. Okay, or Accra. Okay. And uh, so it's located in Accra. If relevant, you can add country, if relevant, country. So if you want to add country, then Accra, Ghana, okay. Then replace with list of principal subject covered or skills acquired. Okay, so I mean you did Bachelor of Science Agriculture. So what what were the principal subjects? I mean the elective subject, the principal subject, the main the main subject. So uh, I mean you can list the main subject to be four or five. So you don't need to burden the CV with a lot of information. So you just have to give a summary. Then the SG, SDG most closely related to education or training. Okay, so education you had is agriculture. So what is the SDG most related to this? The agriculture. So basically uh, like quality education. If it is a health sector, you choose good health and well-being. So this one, uh, quality education. Okay, so you do that for all your education and training, okay? Then we can move to uh, network or civil society engagement. Okay, network or civil society engagement. Now, this is required in the CV. So that is why SI prefers the reference form from a network or civil society organization. So it is preferred. Uh, and so it's also important you show your network or civil society organization here. I mean, in reverse chronological order as indicated in the previous uh, demonstration. 
you can do that here. Then finally, uh, if you have previous scholarship and awards, you can list them here. The scholarship could be any scholarship that you have or any award that you have uh, you have obtained. Don't hesitate to put them here. Okay, so these are the information I have for you in this video. Thank you for watching.